what you're faced with. The thick letter I received states the reason why my permanent residency application was rejected. It's called the decision. <coughs> Officer Medina states in her decision letter that even after I submitted further evidence in response to the request for ver further evidence, I have not been able to prove that the two-year home residency requirement has been fulfilled. The decision letter mentions the chart that my attorney submitted as part of my uh, of the RFP. Officer Medina states that I quote, mainly resided in the U.S., only visiting Argentina from May 28, 2011 to August 14, 2017. 11 trips and a substantive number of days do not meet the residency qualification. 11 trips might amount to two years in total, but a bundle of days, even months, don't the residents make. Days don't make a house, let alone a home. Home is passport stamps, airplane tickets, memorabilia, a list of dates, departures and arrivals only proof visits. Despite my impeccable day counting and document documentation tracking, it appears that I did it all wrong. I think of the years I lived between here and there, absenting myself from where I was expected or wanted to be, to place my body where I thought it was required. But presence doesn't mean dwelling. <clears throat> to be at doesn't mean to be housed in, to take residence to establish domicile, to be domiciled. To counter this, the decision and the line of argumentation, she didn't reside, they never say she didn't leave, for leave I did. My attorney consults the law. NB and her assistants look for precedents on how domicile is established in other areas, such as taxation. They reference the black book. In their text on Form X, they write, Dr. Fuentes respectfully moves the UCs to reopen and reconsider. They claim the UCs decision was based on errors of law. I witnessed the careful construction of the structure of argumentative writing that has always puzzled me from US academia. Different from the more historically oriented labor of Latin American academias that aim to counter erasure disappearance studies, as Diana Taylor names it. NB states, I quote, in its finding, however, the service does not engage in any analysis of what constitutes a visit, nor does any law define what constitutes a visit. Furthermore, I can form the service cannot read the requirement into the law when it's not stated. Truth is, it's not that I did anything wrong, like everything going to waste, Matter of fact is, nobody defines how to comply with the two-year home residency requirement. So then, step two, my attorney's texts are used for how what I did during those 11 trips is consistent with somebody actually residing. I quote, spends more than 120 days, lives with mom, collaborates with universities, upkeeps properties, is granted a leave of absence from her university, receives mail, has possessions such as books and clothes. Mother has to attest to this. She gets an afternoon outing. Un paseo a lo del escribano. Without really knowing or understanding what's going on, my 19, my 19 plus year old mom, her caregiver and a friend of mine, Go pay a visit to the family in Ola Republic. With her trembling hand, mother signs an attestation to confirm that she is in fact my mother. <laughs> her hand is shaky, but she manages to keep her name in line, on the line. My friend documents the moment. The text in the motion to reopen says that she is in poor health. My mom is happy to have, have, to have had an outing and see the notary. In the video, I can see that when she's signing, she takes a pause to ask him, how is your family doing? <laughs> Flavia asked me how I conveyed that I had resided in Argentina when I filed my green card application. I show her the list of departures and arrivals that I had put together. 
Originally, I thought I was being so organized <laughs> and that that would impress the officers. I ended up numbering my list of trips. That is the problem, said Flavia. She's used to us, femme-identified individuals, taking the blame, as we are socialized to do in patriarchy. She explains her thinking. The trip's denomination is usually associated with tourism, hence not residency. She thinks that the lease format undermines the residency argument. So then she translates my list of trips into a graph, a visual technology to make it easier for officers to grasp time as space, time as home. You see, it's not only a matter of word choice, like trips versus residence, having traveled versus having lived. It's also about math, that is, about how to do the counting, and, and more crucially, how to display, to deploy the counting. Instead of trips, Flavia uses residence. Instead of separate visits within a list, she lays out days within years. She bundles up trips, uses colors, and even a map of the city of Buenos Aires with a house icon in its center. <laughs> she builds the house where she wants me, where she wants readers to play me, to, sorry, she builds the house where she wants readers to place me as residing. Welcome to my house. <laughs> Home is the way we live. She's used to it. Flavia used to talk with her mom from LA to Palermo, Sicily, three times a day, every day, during weekends, sometimes more. Flavia's phone calls with her Sicilian mother deserve a separate story. The first at 9.20 a.m., the last one at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time to say, to say good night. The first call while making coffee and getting ready for a whirlwind of a day. Stories about politics, food, cats, or Marcella, while holding a parallel line of thought and concern for what lies ahead. The emails, the bills, the group managing, the problems of this or that engineer to solve, while she cares for her mom across distance. Quick stories, quick stories, memories not so much, snippets perhaps, and the usual boundary drawing when the conversation is extending beyond what is bearable. When speaking about spaghetti at 9.20, before jumping to put out the first fire, becomes unsustainable. Once her mom asked her about the vaccine because it had been two years since she had last, they had last seen each other. I wasn't able to see my mother for two years because of the green card denial, because of the decision. So when my mother was asked by my attorney to sign to attest in the presence of a notary public that she was indeed my mother, she might have felt as if she was asking Trump personally permission for me to travel to see her. We never spoke about this, about what that was about that afternoon. Being the youngest daughter, I don't think I ever grew up in my mom's view. Or is it because of being queer or child-free or sustaining a world that is hard to understand, make of fragments and irresolvable situations, like why would you need to prove where you resided, especially when, when it's so hard for transnational subjects, the likes of three calls a day, to locate themselves in one place, to decide to reside in one of our multiple time zones and social media feeds and contrasting seasons, languages, favorite foods, and modes of address and intimacy? Last episode. In the leaf right home, in the leaf right home, I admire Chicago through the window. I feel excited to still be here, and at the same time, a clear sensation of strangeness invades me. This city doesn't belong to me. I would never feel I belong within these borders. And at the same time, Chicago is such a welcoming city. Despite that rejection or unclaimedness, it hosts you. It embraces you. It understands that you don't feel it, that you don't find yourself in it, that it actually doesn't reflect you. Jesus, my roommate from New York, whom I had I just hung out with, told me that when he returned to Chicago, the city he grew up in, 
after years of living elsewhere, he felt like a child. I can relate for different reasons. Not memories of growing up, but otherness. And yet, Chicago is my hope. The home city where the driver from, you, from Romania teaches you how last names work in his country. Where we love remembering the, remembering the team that in the last soccer World Cup had all the same names. Where the former sous chef from the tapas restaurant tells me stories about Jalisco, the tequila capital of the world, and we, make, we take delight in talking about food. Where we make the city, dreaming of those other places, sharing our coming and going stories, memories of the sea in the summer of Guadalajara, and of the dreaded return to the Midwest winter. Stories of the son that craves McDonald's, even though his uncle owns a chain of birrerias. Where I find myself talking in the past tense about my mother and my trips to Argentina, and I'm afraid that the driver is going to ask me if she passed. Where I record this in my journal, because I don't trust memory, because the sensation replaces the previous one, as one building replaces the one we just passed. We're seeing a red, blue, and white flag is simultaneously grounding and alienating, beautiful and lethal. Thank you. today about unruly returns and the idea of returning to something that changed even, right? And uh, many transnational subjects here can relate that you're like, oh, I want to go back and now it's not the moment, it's the worst possible time. Um, so there's that tension there, right? Of appreciating being here, but also like añorando, no? Like, like that other place. Um, and then, the randomness of, of, you know, like you have to go home because the Fulbright is an exchange program and so it, you're supposed to go back and, but there's not a requirement of you have to give to the society, uh, what society, I mean it's completely random, right? So, uh, and then for example, like I was like, maybe I need an image for like Flavia's conversation with the mom, but I, I chose to leave the chart because Part of her life was also like me going to Buenos Aires all the time. Like I've never been to Palermo, for example. I've never met her mother. Right? So, yeah. So, yes, where is home? And we make it, right? Like as you know, in the cohort, everybody who is in, in 
right? Yes. Yeah. Vulnerability. I mean, yes. And and I, you know, Josh was like, I want to teach this piece, and I'm like, yes, Lauren Berman, Berlant, right? Cruel optimism. Like, I'm curious about the bibliography for that unit. Yeah. Um, and I, actually, Josh said that you never say if you got the green card, mm -hmm. right? Or tenure, mm -hmm. no? Mm -hmm. The book is out, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. There's that when you play the video and you stop, you're blowing, you stop in this moment of suspension, and then you're mentioning you also leave us in this moment of suspension because that was. I was like, oh, the guy doesn't get the, but like you were standing in front of me, so it's like the the imaginary moment in between this moment and right now, where we're with you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I was yeah, like I like that. It's like you know, yes, and even peace. I think right mm -hmm. because it's never resolved, mm -hmm. no. And yes, we can talk about. Okay. Eva. Oh, so thank you. This was so so good. Um, so you mentioned this thing about um, precarity, right? Like, so that was the feeling that you, in at some moment, in mo one moment you mentioned. I don't know exactly the words that uh, the exact words that you said, but that you this is what you were escaping, right? Precarity. Uh, with all these processes, like the the tenure process and the green card. And I don't know if you got the green card already or not, but like I, I assume that the tenure from the <laughs> timeline of yours, so the tenure arrived first. And I was wondering, because the tenure has like such this big symbol of like, I feel for many people that are in academia for leaving this position of precarity, but you still do not have the green card. And I was wondering what this duality of having these two, two symbols like in different sides, like what did that do to your feeling of precarity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, um, yes, that was intense because I was like, if I get tenure but I don't have the green card, that's not going to work, and nobody, like the tenure people were, were dealing with tenure, mm -hmm. right? And the green card people didn't care about tenure, <laughs> right? So it wasn't, they, it wasn't like, no, she's going to get tenure, we need her to get a green card. They, they were unrelated. And one of the, the worst part was to not get clarity. I mean, she's amazing, right? She's been, like, amazing. Yeah. Uh, really. Um, so they, in not getting clarity about, like, you know, what do we do in this situation? And I have to say that, actually, Jorge, Jorge's case, an undocumented postdoc, was in parallel. Right, and and so Ramon was dealing with my case, his case, and it was you have to imagine, and I'm like, is this old fashioned? Is this past, or are we going to right in November, the Trump moment, right? That for many of us messed things up, you know, like with people who were, you know, like I can't lose funding because then, you know, so like. Um, So, so actually, they were like, we're going to get you another visa in case you don't get the green card so we can still, and I got the visa and the green card the, the same day. <laughs> to, to talk about, you know, this is an industry as well, right? Yeah. I, I wanted to ask you about the language, your choice to write this in English. Mm -hmm. Because for some of us to talk about such a vulnerable thing and to talk about home, it's a lot easier in, in the native language. Mm. The, well, I wrote it because, wait, so Sujeto Transnacional Uno was in Spanish with subtitles <laughs> because I did it, so it depends on the venue as well, oh, so right? You, you, you wrote that? Previously in Spanish. Yes. Yeah, so, so the first, the first 
episode, which is about my, my, my visa of extraordinary ability. So it plays with aliens and all of that. <laughs> yes, imagine, I, like I had to ask people to write that I'm extraordinary, right? So like that, it's all about that. And there's Marina Abramovich there. Uh, but so, um, so that it, I actually have both versions, but then like um, I did it in Buenos Aires in my documents. And actually, Lola Arias dramaturged me on Dramaturged Me Live, and she said, you have to explain why all this effort, there is a love story here, because who can really fight that hard if there is not a reason to, to want to be, right? So she said, you have to tell us about Flavia at the beginning, right? So that's uh, related to the language question that you asked me. In this case, I started in English because I was presenting at PSI, right? Um, and I really don't know. I mean, the thing is performance studies, as we all know, that we have this, like, how do you even say things? So like when your training is in, in, in English, then you think like that. And at the same time, the documents are in English. So, but I like I like to. So somebody can analyze when I shift, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, that's gonna be meaningful, you know. Like, cuando estaba lindo para volver, no? Salvese quien pueda. The more that maybe the more dramatic things are in Spanish, you know? Yeah, the Borges moment for Ale. <laughs> 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 So I was thinking, you know, you um, flagged that comment that I'd made earlier when I read it about you not uh, revealing um, the ultimate determination, either for tenure um, with the green card. And, and that comment, when I'd read it, it was because I'd read it on the page, right? And I'm just thinking, like, there's so much more thick ambiguity when you're reading it on the page versus what happens when someone's performing it. Because in some level, the drama of not knowing while you're performing in front, that becomes an interesting performance tension because I'm relieved by your presence mm -hmm. as you're performing, right? So I'm sort of thinking about now, I've encountered this in two stages, one in its written form that we talked about, one now in this reading form. But I also know in your mind, there's another form of it, which is sort of a realized performance. So I just wonder if you might talk about that, what you imagine this in its sort of next realized form might look like um, uh, as you know, as a complete performance. And some of this we talked about over dinner, but it's interesting. And also, if you don't want to tell anybody because uh, <laughs> you're working it out, that's also fine. But yeah, just sort of, how do you imagine the distinction between the dramaturgs? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, would love, I would love to see the giant printer. Yeah. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, see, interesting. And, and wow. objects. You need objects. Tape. Yes, yeah, I see objects. objects. Yeah, I, I want to see objects. Ooh. And, and I was wondering, yes. what if you moved more? Yes. Yeah. I so that I, I envision. I even have the music already. Mm -hmm. I envision a more like dreamy fantasies. You know, like sort of pauses. Uh -huh. um, like uh, yes, I I have like a like a track with, but the uh, one is there. Ah. Yes. So the the this one. Like things getting very strange and more danger, maybe even. Yes, it's, it's, you know, so one thing I think, the lecture, because the lecture format, because of that's my identity, right? That is the intervention as well. Obviously, reading dis distances us, right? But I think that part of the reference to, to the lecture, the scholarly presentation, uh, and I, it, so when I did like a, the first part I did it at, at a salon, I, I kind of um, got it, you know, used uh, Xavier Leroy's product of circumstances, so sort of like show and tell, you know, situation. But yes, it is so much about objects, right? The cutter, uh, 
I was gonna have souvenirs for you all and the outgoing tray, and I asked the, the secretary in performance, can we borrow the outgoing tray? And she's like, here's an extra one. So, yes. The other, the other book, no? Conversaciones con Madre Selva. So I, I was telling my therapist today, I leave my three years of DGS with two creative writing pieces, mm -hmm. which is, he was like, maybe you need, you need the tension. <laughs> you need the, the busyness. So, so this, I kind of want to publish as well, like the three episodes, because the second one, it is really like the feminist. Uh, installment because it was like they called me there to attend to her health because she had a gastric tube and my sister was like I'm not going to do it by myself so then there I was like oh shit my life in the US is going to get messed up and I wanted to come back so Claudia would say that's desire you know right there you never, you're never happy but you are right because um, you know, the way, yes, like I could incorporate something about that here. The, uh, the, in fact, the one part I took out was a, 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 Angeles becomes important again at some point because she's teaching about Chile mm -hmm. and the coup and disappeared and, disappeared and she calls me uh, saying, I'm, I'm in trouble because today, today I'm teaching this class and I think I'm going to cry. And that whole conversation between uh, us uh, about like the tensions about being here, you know, the, the folks who are deported and come back, and us thinking that we're making the revolution, but really not. Mm -hmm. So that is part of like even having friends in other parts of the of the country, mm -hmm. right? So, but yeah, you're right. I should I should put more of the well. We have Flavia like, with her mom, but. Maybe something more about uh, about my mom or or yes, media and the and the relations. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, and and many of you know that you, we parachute right in our places, right? And sometimes you pick up from where you left, but other times you're like, I don't know, this person. They talk too much. We have, I'm always like. Oh, Argentinians, they talk too much, I can't, you know, like they never, like I asked them a question, a generous question, and then it's three hours later, I was like, okay, I asked you what radio program do you listen to, and are you interested in what I listen to, you know, like so, those things are like, you know, kind of being a ghost, right? Yeah, very interesting, thank you, yeah. So objects, media? Yes, maybe one more and then we can, yes. You had your hand. Sure. Yes. I love Pablo. it, Marcela. Um, I, I'm, I'm haunted by pending there. And um, the way I heard it, which might not be the way you told it, 
there is a, a lot of sadness and heartbreak and obstacles and challenges. But there is something about the work pending, in particular when you reach a certain age and you and I share more or less the age, um, that is incredibly liberating 